Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today I want to show you how to smoke on a gas grill. Now I get this question asked a lot, is it possible to smoke foods on my gas grill? And the answer is definitely yes. So while you're waiting and saving up your money to buy that Yoder Smoker YS640 pellet grill, here's what you want to do in the meantime. It's going to require a couple of specialized tools, but you can totally pull it off. In fact, today we're gonna to cook up some fantastic smoked ribs and we're doing it all on the Napoleon gas grill. The first thing you're gonna need is some sort of apparatus that allows you to create smoke inside of the grill. Now this could be anything from a foil pouch full of wood chips uh, to something more advanced like the amazing smoke tube that burns pellets. Um, today what we're gonna be using is the Broil King smoker box and I really like this for the gas grill because it sits underneath the grate, doesn't take up any grate space. So this is going to sit right on your deflector bars or flavorizer bars, whatever you may call them. Fill it with wood chips. As you light the burner underneath them, they begin to smolder and they create some smoke. All right, so we're going to place this right here on the deflector. Open that guy up. And then I'm going to put in some cherry wood chips. These are dry. They're not soaked because I don't want that acrid smoke that comes off of smoked chips. I'd be happy to refill this throughout the cook as we need to but this is gonna give you the cleanest smoke flavor. It's dry wood chips. All right, so once you get those in there, you close it up, and you can actually adjust on this one how much smoke you wanna let out of there, which is pretty cool. We'll go with about halfway for now. So we'll turn that burner directly underneath on. We'll adjust that down to about halfway for now. So that's gonna to begin to heat up those wood chips and they'll begin to smolder. I'm also going to turn on the burner right next to it, so we're gonna be heating half of our grill while leaving the other half completely off. And this is almost immediate. About 30 seconds later, that's all it takes to get some smoke out of this. So we're gonna turn this way down. We'll move our grate into place and let the chamber preheat. Now the next thing that you gotta have is some water inside that chamber. See, we're cooking with gas now, and gas tends to draw out moisture from everything as it's burned, whereas wood puts moisture into the environment as it's burned. So I'm just gonna slide in a couple of drip pans here, and we'll fill these with water. And as the water warms and evaporates, it adds extra moisture to the chamber to make sure that you end up with a really nice moist product in the end. Well, we've leveled off the temperature of the grill at about 275 degrees. We're taking that from two different sources though. So we've got our thermometer on the front of the grill that's reading at about 300. Of course, that's a little bit closer to the fire and a little bit higher. And then down low on the side where we're cooking completely cold, no burners on on the left side of this grill, we're reading at about 250. So we'll average that out at about 275, which is perfect. It's exactly what we're looking for. You can see all this smoke rolling behind me. It's exactly what we need to get this thing started. So there's our setup. Smoke's pouring out of the smoke box. You can see that our water's warming up, adding some extra moisture. Over here we've got a probe just to make sure that everything's where we want it to be. I'm gonna be cooking on a rib rack today, which we don't always do, but I wanna try and fit all three slabs on this side. So we're just gonna stand these up here. And then I'm just gonna close this up, let them take on some smoke and start cooking. And just to reiterate, you heard me talk about cold side, hot side. Obviously one side's not actually cold, but we are leaving half of the burners off. We mentioned this in the setup process. This is true indirect, direct cooking. So where we're putting all of our food, completely indirect today. And that means we don't get any scorching on the bottom of the ribs. And this is really important when you're setting up to smoke on your gas grill. When you get to the point where you're not producing any more smoke inside your gas grill, you want to reload that smoking box so that we can get the smoke rolling once again. Now, it depends on how hot you're running the heat underneath that box, how fast it's going to burn up. But we got about an hour out of our first round, which is pretty good. What I'm going to do here is just take our water pans off. Then I'm going to remove the grate. And then I'm going to just take this out of the grill so it's a little easier to work with. We 
just add some fresh chips to the ones that have burned down. Close that back up. Put it back in place and that'll be smoldering in no time. I might repeat this process of refilling the wood chip box once or twice through the cook. Really a couple of hours of smoke is going to be great for the flavor. And as you can see, it's just a little bit more work when it comes to trying to smoke on a gas grill rather than smoke on a smoker, but it's still totally doable. Now remember to keep an eye on your water pans. You want plenty of water in there, so you got lots of moisture. We'll be back to check on this in another 45 minutes or so. We're about two and a half hours into this cook now, and I've refilled the wood chips one time. We've burned through those. The color on the ribs is really great, and that's what I'm looking for when I'm getting ready to wrap. And I am gonna wrap these ribs in foil today. So we're gonna get in here, check out the setup, check out the color, and just look at that beautiful red color. That's what I'm looking for today. We've got a little bit of coffee on the outside of this one, which gives it an even more beautiful dark into that mahogany color. All right, so those ribs are coming off. They're gonna get wrapped in foil and we'll reset the grill, which means that we can get rid of these water pans now. We don't need those anymore. We're gonna be trapping all of the moisture that the ribs have inside that foil packet. I'm also going to get rid of the rib rack. These are just a little bit too thick for the rack now, being that they're wrapped up in the foil, but we can still keep them all to the left side here, keep our heat on the right side, and we'll go ahead and rotate these probably here in about an hour to make sure everything cooks evenly. All right, so we're gonna even out our temperature again, shooting for about 275 to 300. We'll be back to checking them, like I said, in about an hour. It's been about four and a half hours now. Our ribs are getting super tender in the package there. They're fully cooked. I'm gonna pull them off and see how they taste. And that is a beautiful looking rib. A nice little bit of pink smoke around it, letting us know we got some of that smoke on there. Mmm. So juicy. Great flavor. You can definitely pick up on the smoke. So like I said, a little extra effort. You can recreate this on your gas grill. And look at that bite coming right off the bone. Perfect. Quick sidebar, I'm gonna tell you we just took a 20 minute break before filming the ending of this video. And we fed all the staff here at All Things Barbecue and none of them could believe that those ribs came off a gas grill. But I'm a true firm believer that if you cannot make good ribs on a gas grill, it's not the grill's fault. Thanks so much for watching today. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.